thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, my name is Ben Barnholt, and I teach out at Whitney High School in Rockland, California. Um, our very, very special guest today is uh, R.C. Concepcion. He is an award-winning photographer, podcast host, educator. He is also the author of 11 best-selling books on photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, and HDR. He is the digital post-production specialist and adjunct professor at the Newhouse School at Syracuse University. And uh, friends and attendees, if you can see on the bottom, we have a chat and a question answer segment. Um, this is a webinar setup so that we can't see your video, but uh, we'll be able to, uh, if you can type your questions and, and comments in, the, in those two parts, we'll be able to share them with our guest. And um, it is a pleasure and is an honor to introduce you. Um, Mr. Concepcion, if you can, take it away. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I kind of wanted to keep this very free form, but actually start the process of producing something, right? So when we first started talking about the idea of five things that we wanted to be able to give you, it was like, well, it's not really five, like it's five-ish, it's five more, five less. So I figured I'm gonna go through a project and just point out things that you should know, right? Things, if you're making a package, like how quickly can you make this, right? Everything that you're working with is all based on speed, right? When you start working on something, you have to be creative, but you have to be able to turn that around very quickly. So the more that you know about how to be able to do that, the better it's going to be for you. So if I were to give you the first tip, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen, and I might come back and forth here to just kind of talk to you directly. But the first thing that I would tell you right off the bat when you're working with stuff is organization is absolutely key when you're working inside of Premiere. The more you're organized, the better your projects are going to work. So right off the bat, what I'll usually do is I'll create a project folder when I'm working with stuff. If you do this, I guarantee you, you will not have problems. Most, I'd say 90% of the problems that the students have here at the university is I can't find my files. I don't know where the images are. I don't know how this thing links to this one thing. Don't get into that habit, right? So what I would do is this is a sample project that I put together and inside of here, what I'll do is I'll just keep a series of folders already done. So if it were me, right? Let's see, I'm just gonna duplicate this real quick and just show you how I would do this, right? I would have something like this. And I would call this folder the dummy folder. And inside of that dummy folder, you have an encoded section here. That's where your exported files are gonna go. If you have any audio work, that's where your audio work is gonna go. Your documents, assignments, text, uh, contracts, location stuff, any emails that you need, all of that stuff goes in that one folder. Your footage goes inside of here, usually separated by camera. Right, so if you shoot with an iPhone, iPhone one. If you shoot B-roll, B-roll one, B-roll two. So all of that stuff gets separated inside of here. If you have images, images go inside of there. Then your Premiere project is almost always separate inside of here. Now, why would I tell you this? For the most part, when you're working inside of Premiere, Premiere is a program that assembles stuff for you. So in the process of it assembling one video and another video and another video, it has to pre-render a lot of this kind of stuff so that you could see it better. It also assumes that you are going to be working on one computer and inside of a real environment, more often than not, what will happen is you'll have to work in a team environment and you might have to do some handoff. So if you have to do a handoff, you have to hand it to somebody for grading or somebody needs to be able to do a second edit. It's really hard for you to be able to keep all of your assets together as well as all of the pre-rendered files. So having all of that stuff inside of one folder just makes it so much easier for you to be able to work. So that's where I would usually put that. Now, I've started to pre-cook some of this stuff so that I can make it a lot easier for you. But I wanted to make sure that I said, look, it's, it sounds like a really dumb tip, but a place for everything and everything in its place. And you set that up right in the very beginning and you're good. I almost always tell people to just make a zip file by just right clicking on it and leaving it like that. And then just keeping this folder on your computer. So now you have to do an assignment. You have to go out and do the, uh, the cat stuck in the tree. You just double click on this guy. It makes a W folder and you can just say cat stuck in tree package. 
Now you record all of your stuff, record all of your stuff. You could throw it right inside of here. You always have this and you don't have to worry about making all of this stuff over and over and over again. So having a sample package is very important. Let's go ahead and just throw that inside of there, throw that inside of there. Let me give you the analogy and let me give you the anatomy of what we're working on so far. So in this package, I'm trying to do the same thing that I was just telling you about. And inside of here, I have footage. There's my camera A footage. Here's all of the footage that I've been working with, right? And all of the stuff that I'm doing right here is just working on an iPhone. You'd be shocked to know how many people inside of news desks and creating projects are all doing this stuff with an iPhone. So we're just using regular standard iPhone footage. I have some older footage that I found for the piece that I put inside of here. And I went out and I got some B-roll for this. So this is gonna be gratuitous. It's my daughter and my wife. Right, so we just put that together. Then I got some images over here, picked up some images in case I need them. And then I have the Premiere file. So organization, step number one. Now, once we have that all set, I'm gonna go inside of Premiere, I'm gonna make a new project. And inside of that project, I know right now that all I have to do is just go, all right, well, put the project inside of that Premiere folder. Click on choose. Once we have that set, I'm gonna call it the ballet piece. I don't have to change anything else for now and just hit okay. That will render for a bit and it brings me into the, it brings me into the first screen. Now, this project window, if you're not familiar with Premiere, this project window is where you're going to live and die, right? Here is where all of your assets are going to work. So keeping this organized inside of your project window is super important, right? And you can drag assets inside of here or you can create the equivalent of folders on a computer inside of Premiere called bins. So here's the part that I think is pretty cool. Because we have this already organized on the folder level here, all we have to do is go, well, you know what? I need my footage. I need my images. That's already broken down. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna highlight these two. I can drag them right in here and boom. Rather than importing the files, not only does it take the files inside of here, but it also puts them inside of your bins. So you don't have to worry about that organization. Or a lot of the stuff that I will tell you right off the bat when you're working with this is the tips are very dumb and they're really small, really tiny, tiny things that you're like, well, do it this way, import these folders this way. There's nothing revelatory about a lot of the stuff that you're working inside of Premiere, but what it does is it shaves time, right? If you have to spend a second doing one thing or two seconds doing another thing, aggregately, the more seconds that you spend, the shorter that process becomes and the quicker you can turn something around. So slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Like you have to have an, the ability to be able to kind of just move around very quickly. And every little tiny thing that you do saves you time to do that. So keep that in mind when you're working with this. Now, back inside this project over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch. This trips everybody up over here on the left-hand side you'll notice that you have a section here called project. There's three views. There's a list view, icon view, freeform view, right? When you first start in Premiere, just use list view. List view makes it a lot easier for you to be able to drill up and down and see all of the different pieces of footage that you have. If you were to switch to something like a freeform view, what happens here is inside of this project window, every time that you double click on something, it opens up a separate tab right here. So if I were to open up this camera A footage, yes, I can see all of the footage that I'm looking for here, but then you're like, oh, well, how do I get up? How do I do this? How do I navigate? Like, where is my, where's the other ballet thing? Where's all my other stuff? Don't freak out. All that is, is you've opened up these separate windows that sit here. You know that because it says bin, contents of the folder camera A, contents of the footage folder. Now, that said, one of the things that I think is super cool is when you're working in smaller real estate, it's a pain in the butt for you to be able to kind of see 
everything that you need here. Get used to keyboard shortcuts. First keyboard shortcut I would tell you right off the bat is the tilde key. Your tilde key, whenever you have one of these windows open, so notice here I have the program window, I have the timeline window, the Lumetri window, the, the bin window. If you hit the tilde key, it makes everything really big. Hit the tilde key again, makes it small. If you go to the ballet piece window, hit the tilde there, that makes it big, small. You wanna see your timeline? There's your timeline big, there's your timeline small. So those help. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna click on this hamburger here and I'm gonna close, no, 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 not the project. I'm gonna close the panel. And I'm gonna close this panel. I'm gonna go back here and I'm just gonna switch into this one. Now, a lot of this stuff is gonna go pretty quickly for you, but I think that you can always just rewatch this and you can check this. If you have any questions at any point in time, I would just continue to just come back in, check with you guys here and we can go back and forth on that. Now, the next thing that I wanna show you from a tip standpoint is if you are in this project, we know that in a package, you're gonna have an A roll, which is gonna be your audio track. And then after that, you're going to have B roll that's gonna sit directly on top of it. So if you were to twirl down your camera A, you have all of the footage that you're working with here, and it's gonna be extremely hard for you to be able to find whatever it is that you want from here. All right, especially if it's small like this, right? You're looking at all of this footage and you're like, well, which is the footage that you need to be able to work with? Notice right here, you have frame rate, media start, media end, and you can move to the right to find a whole bunch of different things. Media duration is your friend, right? That's the one that you normally wanna be able to take a look at. And if you think of it from a construction standpoint, your A-roll is always going to be the longest one because it's spoken word, right? Your interviews, of individuals are probably going to be next to that, right, in terms of length. So that's information that's vital for whatever it is that you're working with, but it sits really tucked away inside that one window. So I would recommend for you, inside of this project section, take your media duration and notice that you can grab that and you can drag those columns around as you need them. So more often than not, like, I don't need to know that my frame rate is 30 frames per second. Like, I pretty much, I'm okay with that. But if I put media duration in the front, now I can take a look at all of this stuff and go, well, there's 19, there's 22, there's 24. Look, there's a minute 25, there's a three minute. Okay, so now I know which is which. Look, there's my A-roll, right? There's one, there's another, and then there's the A-roll. So- RC? Yes, sir. Um, hey, buddy, um, on those, that last part, uh, we didn't get to see your screen. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and do that one more time. Hold up. So this is what you do. Inside of the project window, tilde up, watch this. There's my frame rate. There's my media start. There's my media end, in point and out points. This is the window that we want right here, this column. Notice that you can toggle by that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this column drag it all the way over to the left, let it go. So now media duration is the first thing that you see and we can see all of that stuff right here. Notice you can also sort by that. That's where I could see, well, there's the bigger ones, there's the smaller ones. It makes it a lot easier for you to be able to capture or see all of the different things that you wanna be able to work with. Now that I have that set, I can go, okay, well, that looks pretty good. Like I know exactly what it is that I'm working with. I can tilde out and find the footage that I wanna work with. Now, once I have that set, what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to start going through this and start putting some stuff together, right? So there's our three interviews. Don't lose anything. Make it a lot easier for you to grab all of these guys and just go, okay, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab them and I'm just gonna right click on them and give them a label. So I'll go ahead and I'll label them. There's my rows. I'm gonna label this one. There's my rows. I'm gonna label this one. Now, obviously I can grab a series of these and do them together, right? I can command click these two, right click, label rows. I don't have to deal with it. So those are the ones that I'm gonna be using. Specifically, the first one that I wanna use here is this one 
for my A roll. Now, inside of my A roll, once you take a look at this, notice that it's gray, all right? So what I did with this project was I recorded the A roll for the package on the phone and I wanted it to sound really, really good. So to do that, what I wound up doing was, that's what my recording looks like, right? My wife's gonna kill me because it's her closet, but I have my phone, I have my script. I had it there at the ready. What I did is I actually turned it horizontal. I can read it like this as a video file, or I can turn it horizontally and record a video file and then use a sheet of paper to read it. The good part about this is the clothes that I have around here, plus the blanket that I put here and the pillow that I put in the background creates a little bit of a cocoon. So it kind of eliminates a little bit of the reverberation. So makes it a lot easier to get a nicer piece of audio for what I'm doing right now. It records video that's like this, right? So you don't see anything, which makes it kind of hard to see. This brings me to the next tip. Sometimes when you're trying to be able to sync stuff from a video standpoint and you're looking at it, sometimes video is not the best way for you to look at it. Sometimes audio is. So to do that, what you can do is you can click on this wrench right in this one section and notice that right here at the very top, it's telling you that it's looking at composite video, audio waveforms or alpha. If you switch this to audio waveform, now you're looking at all of the audio for this. And it goes, all right, well, I know that I don't have to scrub through all of this. There's my first section. There's my second section. There's my third section. So from a time situation, it makes it a lot easier. Now, let's go ahead and just, there's our footage. There's our images. I'm going to make one bin that's separate here. And I'm going to call this sequences. That way I can keep all of my sequences together and I'm gonna make another bin inside of here called subclips. And I'll come back to that one in a second. But inside of here, once I have this all set, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna click on file, new sequence. And the sequence that I'm using more often than not when I'm working with a mobile phone is a sequence of DSLR 1080p30. And I'm gonna call this the ballet piece. Cool part about this is that every time that you create it, it always remembers the last sequence that you worked with. So that's pretty straightforward. Having the sequences folder highlighted, again, time saving, right? If I didn't have anything highlighted, it would have to put it down here at the bottom. That means that then I'd have to drag it into the sequences. It's just annoying. But having the sequences folder highlighted, it puts it right inside of there. Now, once we have that set, what do we want to do from here is I want to be able to come into this A roll and start working with it and start cutting these sections. If we were to take a look at hit the space bar to listen to it. For Jennifer Concepcion, dance is an essential part of who she is. She taught at body language in Long Island for over 15 years before moving to Tampa, Florida to start a new career, bringing her love of dance with her to a new part of her life. Not soon after, she would learn. So that's pretty straightforward. So now all I would have to do here is get myself into this one section and start working with adding all of this stuff into the sequence. Take a second before we go into anything else, take a second and take a look at your keyboard, right? If you were to look at your keyboard, you'll notice that on this one section on the keyboard, you have J, K, and L. Those three keys are gonna be very important, especially, and also I and O, comma, and period. Those keys are very essential. Let's work with JKL. Take a look at this. I'm gonna come back over here and bring myself over to the desktop. If I hit the letter L, by having this here, still like this. Jennifer Concepcion dance is an essential part of who she is. Okay stops it. You hit the letter J. Okay, stops it. So because your fingers are in that exact same spot right there, 
you know that immediately you could just use these three fingers, J, K, L, right? Having those set, if you just reach a little bit higher, directly above the J, K, and L, you have the I and the O, the endpoint and the out point. So for that, once we work with this, I could just go, all right, well, right from inside of here, hit the letter I inside of the source panel. Now, L to go forward. For Jennifer Concepcion, dance is an essential part of who she is. K stops it. Now that that's done, hit the letter O, there's my out point. I don't have to do anything else because then the next thing that you wanna do is once you have your keys right there, having your index finger, if you just slide your index finger down one, you immediately touch the comma. That comma is an insert, watch this. Immediately, it puts it right inside of the timeline. So rather than sitting around and thinking about how to be able to drag or move around or which one of these things do I grab or do I hit it with a mouse, I don't have to do anything else. You could just grab the keyboard, move the keyboard to the side, JKL, INO, do the in point and the out point at the bottom, and your comma is right there. So all we have to do from here is just continue to create more of this. So watch this. I already got my first one. The playhead's already the end of this. Come over here, move back to this one. I know that that's the start, so I'm gonna hit my endpoint. L. She taught at Body Language in Long Island for over 15 years before moving to Tampa, Florida to start a new career, bringing her love of dance with her to a new part of her life. There's the end, hit the out point, comma. It adds it right at that playhead. I can hit the backslash key to show me the full timeline. Now from here, let's bring it to this one section, hit the letter I, L. Not soon after she would learn. Oh, it looks like I did another, there's another clip that I'm missing there. All right, well, I could always come back over here and take a look at my stuff. So here's a second one. I can come back over here, go back to, oh, not my alphas. Go to my audio waveform. Oh, there's the rest of it. Not soon after she would learn that she was about to start working with the most important student, her new daughter, Sydney. So, okay, that sounds good. Hit the letter I, come to the end of this. Let's go back. Right there, hit the letter O, hit the comma. Now I've produced that main section of the timeline. So for Jennifer Concepcion, dance is an essential part of who she is. She taught at Body Language in Long Island for over 15 years before moving to Tampa, Florida to start a new career, bringing her love of dance with her to a new part of her life. Not soon after, she would learn that she was about to start working with the most important student, her new daughter, Sabine. Easy. So that part's done, right? Or a roll, and I can continue to do this for the entire thing, but I just kind of wanted to just stop there for a second. So the keyboard shortcuts are important. The organization is important. Setting up the bins is important because it makes it a lot faster. Now, visually, when you're working with this, you know that your V1, that first track that you have there, even though the video is just of the front end of the pillow, leave it there for now. Because what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to use the second tracks that you have there for your B-roll, right? Anything that's going to cover that one section. But before you do that, <coughs> you do have your SOTs, right? You have interviews that you've done with Jennifer in this instance. You have interviews that you've done with Sabine for this instance. And your story is going to be formed a lot by what those responses are for those portions of the video. So we were going to have to pivot at this point and go back and listen to those portions of the video. But I don't wanna put myself in a position where I'm like, is that good? Is that not good? I, I don't really know to start doing your inserts. And that's where I think sub clips, I think are very important for this. So let me show you how we're gonna work with that. Inside of here, back in this one assignment, we have a section where we're taking a look at these sections, right? Now we know that we have our video right here with Jennifer. Now, what I want to do is after this section of the A roll, that's where I want to drop a portion of this, but I don't know what first. 
So I'm going to have to listen to this. Again, I'm not really focused on watching her just yet here. So it probably would make sense for me to be just go to the audio waveform and look for a big spike. So what got you started in dance? All right, so I gave her a question. I know that right there is the start. Like many little girls, my mom signed me up for dance when I was quite young and just became my heart and my passion. So I know that that's the first thing that she wants to work with. And I can switch this if I want and go back to my composite video. I know that that's a good clip. I know that I have it right here, but I want to work with that stuff later. So what I'll do here is I'll just twirl this up and I want to start using this sub clip section. So she said, dance, my heart, that's where it is. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just grab this and drag it straight down into the subclips. Rather than drag it into the timeline, I can drag it into a folder here and create a subclip of that one area, right? Or having it selected, you can do a right click. I want to make sure that I'm on the subclips folder though. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a subclip. By making a subclip, I can turn around and say, Jen, uh, my heart, passion. I always tell people, make sure that you do not restrict the, tr the clip to the subclip boundaries, right? Because you want to be able to kind of extend and contract if you need it. If you click OK, there's my first sub. So that's already set. Now I can continue and listen to the rest of this. Dance. There's the next one. I love dance so much that being able to share that with the next generation of future dancers is just really neat. It's just really neat watching little girls practice and practice and doing pretty hard to do, giving them all the different things they have to think about at the same time and watching their joy when they know they got it. That's really awesome. So that's the end of that one. There's our in and out point for that. Right click, make a subclip. That subclip would be Jen. Watch their eyes. Awesome. Something that I'm going to remember. I'm going to click OK. So now I have these two clips right here that are set. And I can go back to this piece. For Jennifer Concepcion, dance is an essential part of who she is. She taught her body language. And okay, so I can stop right at this one section. Matter of fact, I can use the shift key. Another tip. As you drag back, it clips right to the start of that. So now this is a section where I want to be able to add that part of Jen. Right? So I said something about her start. So I can go through all of my footage here and go, well, what sound of that do I think would be something that would be appropriate? I and mean, I think that this is where I think it's key for you to listen to everything, right? When you do an interview, you have to go through the entire interview. I would recommend that as you're going through the entire interview and listening to all of that stuff, it's better for you to just go in and make subclip, 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 subclip. It gives you a good idea for the narration of the story and then once you have that set, then you can go back and create your A role that's gonna be part of that story. And then you can go, well, I remember hearing this one section that goes over here, or I remember hearing this one section that goes over here. So it gives you context and it makes it a lot easier for you to find exactly the pieces that you want. Now, once we have that set, we can come back over here and I can say, all right, well, now that you have that, I know that my heart and the passion is what I wanted, right? I can double click on that and go, well, that was the clip that I had for that. But I don't want to drag it. I don't want to move it. I don't want to be able to do anything else. I just have the point exactly where I need it. I just double click on the point where I'm using this sub clip. Let's just use the exact same keyboard shortcuts that we've been using. Hit the comma. And look, it throws it right inside of that one section in between the two. So that insert, what it does is it shoves all of your other clips off to the right and puts it right in the middle. 
So if we were listening now, it would sound like this. For Jennifer Concepcion, dance is an essential part of who she is. Like many little girls, my mom signed me up for dance when I was quite young and just became my heart and my passion. She taught at body language in Long Island for over 15 years before moving to Tampa, Florida to start a new career, bringing her love of dance with her to a new part of her life. If I want space for things to breathe, I could always just come over and drag these over to the right and leave my playheads there to do that. So right from inside of this, let's just say that for now, I wanted to use this one. Hit the comma. There's my space. There's the little space that I left for that. Bringing her love of dance with her to a new part of her life. I love. Oh, I need more space. I'm going to drag it over the right. I love dance so much that being able to share that with the next generation of future dancers is just really neat. At any point in time, if you don't want that much to it, you can always just come over to your ripple tool or come over to your cut tool, cut that, select, delete. There's our space. Not soon after, she would learn that she was about to start working with her most important student. Her new daughter, Simeon. Now, from here, I can go back into my footage, and in my footage, I can review this to find the portions of Sabine where I'm going to talk to her about this. So there's my Sabine footage. So Inside of here, switch to my audio. In the house where mom was a dancer. Well, I guess growing up in the house with mom as a dancer meant that I was kind of raised around the subject of dance, even from an early age, because we have this photo in our, in our house where my mom's on point shoes, but uh, the picture's cut off at the waist because at mom's feet is me in big baby point shoes. And all right, so let's just leave it for that, right? And we're going to grab that, add that there. So, I, I guess growing up in the house with... I'm going to have to listen to anything else past that. But all you're doing is using those sets of keyboard shortcuts to be able to just do the main part of the narration of this. And you've just used comma, in point, out point, and you've set all of this stuff up from here. Now, once we have that set, that allows you to be able to do the A roll for this. There are a couple of things that I think are a pain with this one thing. You'll notice that as you go from here, and I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it a little bit more pronounced. Watch this. I'm gonna drag this over to the right and listen. And just became she taught her body language. All right, I'm gonna grab this guy and just drag it out so you can hear the you can hear the drops. She taught her body language in Long Island for over 15 years. So inside of here, there's a shh that's happening in the background. And as soon as you get here, nothing, no sound whatsoever. She taught her body language in that sound is not there at all, whatsoever. Long Island for over 15 years of a new part of her life. Completely silent. Here comes the whoosh. I love dance so much that being able to... That is super disconcerting to people when you're working. What happens here is it feels like there's a drop in audio and it comes back up. There's a drop in audio and comes back up. Make sure that when you are recording stuff that you have room tone. Room tone is just audio that's going to help a ton when you're trying to be able to mix all of this stuff. And it's ambient sound of an environment so that you can kind of blend all of this information. Whenever you finish your interview, wherever your main section of your interview is, you can turn around and go, all right, well, I need to be able to sit here for like 60 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever it is that you want, but get a good amount of ambient sound for an environment. Once you have that ambient sound for the environment, you can then turn around and add that directly under 
the audio track that you're working with. And it kind of gives you a place for you to be able to blend to. I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Now, inside of here, I have the project that's set up. And inside of here, let's see. If you take a look at this. That's my room tone. So that's the room tone that I set up for this. I don't want to grab the video because I don't need the video. I need the audio to kind of set that up. So instead of grabbing this, which would bring both your video and your audio, that's not good. Use these two. If you were to grab this guy by itself here, this icon just brings the video by itself. If you click on this icon right here, you could just drag the audio by itself. So now let's listen to the same thing here. Special part of who she is. Like Bring it to the beginning. For Jennifer Concepcion, dance is an essential part of who she is. It's like many little girls, my mom find me after a dance when I was quite young. And just became my heart and my passion. She taught at body language in Long Island for over 15 years before moving to Tampa, Florida to start a new career part of her life. I'll give it a little bit of a space and then I'm going to grab these guys and move them in here. I love dance so much. Part of her life. I love dance so much that being able to share that with the next generation of future dancers. So it blends most of that information in. If I need more of it, another tip, as you're grabbing that stuff, I only have 30 seconds of it. Hold on the option key on your keyboard single click on this, drag it to the right. And now I have two copies of it. If I hit the backslash key, I see those two, I can drag that. And now I have four copies of it. Hit the backslash key. For Jennifer Concepcion, dance is an essential part of who she is. It's like many little girls, my mom signed me up for dance when I was quite young. So, now we've talked about room tone. We've talked about how to be able to copy stuff over. We know that this is our room tone track that we have here down at the bottom. We know that this is the main audio track. And at this point, all we need to do is go back over through our footage and go, all right, well, here's some footage, right? I'm gonna grab that right there. Hit the letter I, hit the letter O, and using the same trick that we talked about before, which was not dragging from this one thumbnail, but dragging from this area here where you could drag video only or audio only, I can start moving this around. There's V2, which is going to be my B-roll. For Jennifer Concepcion, dance is an essential part of who she is. It's like many little girls, my mom signed me up for dance when I was quite young. So there's a section where she says that she signed up for dance when she was quite young. It's just the question now of, oh, look, there's a picture of her when she was quite young. Hit the letter I, hit the letter O, drag it a little bit, bring it over here. I don't have, oh, not that one. I don't have to worry about whether or not it's big or small or if it's going to mess anything up because I'm not touching this A-roll that sits there. So if we were to play back. Part of who she is. It's like many little girls, my mom signed me up for dance when I was quite young and just became my heart and my passion. So bring this out. Became my heart and my passion. All right. So if I had more information, right? If I had, let's say, I want to be able to use this one, right? I want to go back to that inside of here. I can then take that video, bring that video inside of here and start to J cut into the next one. She taught her body language. Yeah. Look, I don't need that pullback right there. So I'm going to bring this to the end, drag this to the beginning. She taught her body language in Long Island for over 15 years. Now from here, 
all I have to do is go back into my B-roll. There's my endpoint. There's my out point. Grab the video. But notice that inside of here, watch this. I'm going to, I like this. Actually, let's do it this way. I'm going to show you something else. One more tip here. Let's say that I'm going to grab this one right here. I'm going to grab the in point and the out point for this one section. And I'm going to drag the video in here. Then I'm going to grab an in point and an out point for this section. And I'm going to drag that video on top of this. So literally it's going to go there and then it's going to go there. There's another problem that I'm running into this, right? So I got this video and this video I got from YouTube and the YouTube video looks like it's only 720p, right? So if I had, and I'm just going to do this on purpose so that you can kind of see this. Imagine if all of a sudden I had, if I go back here and I had a series of videos like this, where you had one, two, three, four different videos that you needed to be able to adjust, right? For individual videos. Well, a lot of those adjustments happen in one section in Premiere called effect controls. So instead of effect controls, you can change your motion or your scale or your rotation. So inside of that, you want to be able to make the change one time, and then you want to apply those changes to multiple pictures. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And that'll be more tips that I think are important. I have this set here and having that video over here, I'm just going to click on this twirl out here and then I'm going to go to effect controls. And I want to work with this video here. I just deselected it and reselected it again. There's my scale, right? So if it's too small, let's just say for now, I'm just going to push it up a little bit, or I'm going to do a change to this. And that's the change that I want. You can see that the change is right here. There's an effects label right there telling me that there was a change in this one area. Now, if I go to the next one, the next one does not have it nor does this one, nor does this one. Well, what I can do is rather than going in here, right? And this one was easy because this one was just a scale of 162. But if you make a change in a position or you make a change in a rotation, there could be more than one thing. Just go over to this one section, having that one section selected, you'll see that there's an FX here where you can toggle the effect on or off the change that you made. If you single click on this, you can do a copy command C and you're copying that one effect. If you come over here and you select this guy and you do a command V for paste, it pastes that effect onto that clip, saving you a lot of time. Even better still is if you highlight these two and you do a command V, it'll paste them to all of them. So you don't have to go into the next clip, adjust it, go into the next clip, adjust it. Then there's no sense in it, right? You just take the effect that you have from one section and paste, 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 and then you're done. From inside of here. And just became my heart and my passion. She taught at body language in Long Island for over 15 years before moving to Tampa, Florida to start a new career, bringing her love of dance with her to a new part of her life. Now, if it were me, I would probably come back to her because we haven't seen her in a bit. I love dance so much that being able to share that with the next generation and all the future dancers is just really neat. And it puts you into a spot where now all of a sudden, very quickly, you've been able to cut, 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 cut. Uh, how are we doing so far? Buddy, we are doing amazing. Um, I mean, I've got so many notes and, and um the uh the the one thing that we're, we're kind of pushed against time here for a minute but if you could for for maybe 30 seconds to a minute um it almost feels like when you were talking about the sub clips that almost makes the process of logging the interviews a little bit easier because you can log them and then almost like take each clip and make them sub clips as you're logging them absolutely absolutely yeah. 
what you're doing here is you're trying to be able to just kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Because there's a bunch of stuff where you're you're going to have to sit and you're going to have to log. Like, it, you know you're going to have to do it, but then you don't want to necessarily have to go do that and then come back and turn your subclips over. So you may as well do both of them at the same time while you're working with it. You have to listen to the footage anyway. So why wouldn't you put them together? So At, in at the same time. Yeah, in actuality, like, full disclosure, like, I don't talk about it, but... I actually have a system, like a, a button system that I use from a company called Monogram, where you can where you can customize the buttons to do that. And what I'll do is I'll just have it sent. And as I'm listening, I'm like, oh yeah, subclip, subclip, subclip. I may have to name it. Yeah. Hit it, name it, hit it, name it, go to the next one. So that way they're all set up in one library. And then all I have to do is just go back and go, yep, that one, insert, that one, insert, that one, insert. And it makes it a lot easier for you to be able to produce. Uh, that was incredible. Uh, uh, it, even even if you just went back and watched the first, specifically the first 20 minutes when you went through the organization part, I think every high school kid, uh, especially in your introduction classes get, as you get started, um, I mean, that was that was phenomenal. Uh, RC, we really appreciate the time. Uh, you were you were incredible. Um, we are going to post this session. So if you didn't get a chance to watch it, um, you can uh, tell other classmates and other teachers that um, it's going to be up on the website in the next couple of days. Um, buddy, we really appreciate the time. Um, you've been awesome. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Not a problem. Happy to help. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys. Uh, thanks for attending the session and uh, we'll see you soon.